Hi and welcome back to Neural Splendor. Tonight we're going to shift gears a little bit. A customer brought us a Pete that has a C15 CAD in it. And his complaint is that it doesn't build boost pressure like it used to. And the cut looks like the customer's done some work on it. It looks like there's a new turbo on it. And all new charge air boots. So he has tried to um, take care of the problem. But... Uh, apparently they were not able to uh, tackle it so they brought it to us to see if we could. So we don't normally work on cats but uh, a diesel engine is a diesel engine. If you can get a little bit of knowledge on how systems work usually you can figure it out and that's what we're going to do. So the next two or three videos uh, will be us working on this cat and figuring out what was wrong and we did. We're almost done with it and everything's working the way it should now. So you'll get to see what we did and how we did it. Should be interesting. Hi, Neural Splendor here. Got a little treat for you. Customer brought this in for us to take a look at it. And it's not a Cummins, but yep, it's a cat. So the problem is a low, low boost and it's probably something that we can fix up. One of the goals of my channel is for you to learn. So I wanted to give you a, uh, an overview of how this system works on the C15. It has a mechanical waste-gated turbo, which has got a, a can with a diaphragm and a heavy spring in it. And then when air pressure is applied to the can, it pushes a lever and it opens a waste-gate in the exhaust housing. The waste-gate is just a lever with what looks like a steel slug, round slug, like a quarter welded on it. And that covers a hole in the exhaust housing. Spring pressure in that can holds that through a hinge mechanism tight against that hole. And all the exhaust pressure has to go through the exhaust impeller causing the turbo to speed up. When the turbo gets to a place where it's turning as fast as the ECM wants it to turn by Bruce pressure, it will, that can is calibrated so that it'll start to open from the boost pressure and then it dumps the exhaust pressure around the impeller through that hole that it's covering, and the turbo slows down quickly. On the driver's side of the engine, there's a steel line from the intake that is sensing pressure of what's in the intake manifold. That goes to a manifold. There's another line off the manifold that goes around the engine to the turbo wastegate can. In the manifold, there's a solenoid. The ECM controls that with a pulse width. It can close the solenoid, it can open the solenoid, or it can throttle the solenoid so that it's just barely open. So if when the engine starts, that valve is closed by the ECM and it stays closed. So all the sense pressure goes through the line, into the manifold, out of the other line in the manifold, over to the wastegate. As long as the pressure doesn't get so high that the wastegate is opened, you'll continue to build boost. At around 26 PSI, the wastegate will start to open and the turbo will slow down very rapidly and the boost will start to drop. At that point, the ECM will cycle that valve open and closed and that will dump the pressure out of that can. The wastegate closes again and the turbo speeds back up. So this manifold and this solenoid is a fine control at boost to keep it right up as to the place where the ECM calibration wants it to be. There's also an electronic boost sensor that screws in the intake manifold and that sensor tells the ECM what the pressure is in the manifold. And that's how the ECM knows what it's going to do with that valve in the manifold. So when the customer came in, it wasn't building any boost. There was a problem. We found it. And the next video, couple videos, you'll see what we found and how we fixed it. Thanks for joining me at Neural Splendor. Put your thinking caps on. We'll see you next time.